Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and, your and we are Fun and Jesse. So right about now, we're gonna do another reaction video and this one right there was suggested by one of our uh, fun in the comment section below. He said that we should go react to this is what's going to happen next. So I don't really know what the big video is talking about but this is a kind of uh, uh, talking about the order. Yeah, so it's like a suspense type of thing. It's keeping you in the some mystery. So, so anyway, without any further ado, guys, let's get it. The World Order was made in 1945 at the end of a war, and a civil war can begin a new order inside of a country. The Chinese Civil War began their new order 1949, and so that's like a new beginning. They always come out of wars. And a war is a fight for how the system works. So we'll begin there. After the fight of how the system works, it's a great leveler. It gets rid of a lot of the debts and it starts over. And then there's a new power. In the United States, the new world order, it was an American world order because the United States won World War II. It had 80% of the world's gold. Gold was money. It had the dominant military power. It had nuclear weapons. And because of that, we began the American world order. They carve up the world. Here are the borders. This group gets this piece and so on and so forth. And then they begin. And, and by the way, this has happened repeatedly throughout history. And so they start off with those new rules of the game. And you enter a period of peace and prosperity. And it's peace because nobody wants to fight the dominant power. The dominant power won. And there's a change in psychology really that you're dealing with because quite often these things take place, they take a generation or more to take place, a lifetime. And the people who enter the war do so, so boldly. But everybody who enters the war and then goes through the war wish they never went through the war because it's so terrible. But they come out and the war is over. They want peace, they want productivity and so on. And it's a great leveler, less wealth gaps and so on. And they work well together and they build a period of peace and prosperity, that is a long period of peace and prosperity. But during that peace and prosperity, more and more prosperity takes place, and they increasingly bet on that prosperity, and people get more in debt. And so you see the debt levels rise, and you see naturally, as prosperity comes, it comes in unequal ways, and some get richer than others. And so wealth gaps rise, and then those wealth gaps increasingly create opportunity gaps because the rich people have more resources to educate their children and give them the benefits. And so that happens over a period of time while the economy gets more indebted. And of course, as time progresses, other countries also rise. Those maybe that even lost the war, like Germany and Japan, they rebuild and they become competitors. And so what was a unique power of having won the war becomes less unique as there was more competition. And then you get a new generation of people who have a different mentality. They get used to those benefits and so on. And they are, let's say, less cautious, less cautious in their financial behavior and so on. And so the classic ingredient also is that that country that wins the war also has the world's reserve currency because, okay, you need a currency to transact internationally. It's like a language, you need a language to transact internationally. And the winner of the war gets the world's reserve currency because everybody thinks that's the most stable and they also want to save in it. So I think there are three things, three big forces to keep your eye on. And when you see them in their cycle, then it's clear. First, are you earning more than you are spending? I want them to look at it as the country, but the country is nothing more than the aggregate of the people. And so when you look at those three forces, I want to make sure that they're clear and you could align them up and you could see where you are. Is the country earning more than it's spending and building savings? Or is it spending more than it is earning and creating debt? Because one man's debts are another man's assets. And when somebody is holding those assets and they're producing a lot more of that money in debt. Money goes down in value as they produce it to produce that buying power. And then that gets people bad returns. 
It produces a higher amount of inflation. And then people get out of cash and bonds. And that produces rising interest rates while there's rising inflation. And that produces stagflation. So I want them to get the mechanics of that because that's happening now. You could see it. This is not controversial. We are producing a lot of debt. We're spending a lot more than we're earning. And as a result, they're printing a lot of money. And the printing of a lot of money creates a lot of inflation. And with that inflation, you know, cash is trash. You don't want to hold cash and you get out of that. And that causes rates to rise. And that's one of those three factors. So you can see it happening. The second force is the internal conflict force, how you are with each other. Are you operating cohesively, common mission, and moving in the right direction, the system working? Or are you at each other's throats? Is the system threatened? Because history has shown when the causes that people are behind are more important to them than the system, the system is in jeopardy. And that is a risky situation. It's a risky situation because it produces disorder and it can produce a form of civil war. And at those times when you have that, you see greater and greater polarity. In politics, it shows up a greater and greater populism of the left and populism of the right. And populists want to fight for their side. They're not moderates. Moderates want to work together to try to find a compromise that's best for the whole. Populists appeal to their crowd by saying, I am fighting for you. And they will fight each other. And that fight can be at the threat of the system. So in history, for example, we saw four democracies in the 1930s choose to become dictatorships as one side fights to the other because they become so disorderly. And we have a system right now that you could see that it is possible in elections that neither side might accept losing. And so the system becomes in jeopardy and you see that the moderates leave the system. You can't be moderate. You have to pick a side and fight. And so you see this in the French Revolution. There were moderates in the early part of it that recognizing that there were problems and wanting to work together. The moderates got guillotine. The polarity began. The same was true in the Russian Revolution. The same was true in the Chinese Revolution, the Cuban Revolution, and so on. Polarity gets greater and greater as there's a greater intensity to fight. And that is the internal piece. So that's the second force. And the third force is the rise of a great power, the geopolitical force that's going on that we're seeing today with China and Russia and so on and how that's changing because when the power of a country diminishes when we get weaker financially or how we are with each other and so on there are greater vulnerabilities and there's always the competitive power that learns how to become stronger competition always happens there's the establishment and then there's the new competition and as they get stronger they get stronger in all ways militarily and commercially and so on and that's the dynamic that we're seeing the so, events that happened in the ukraine and that is bringing all this development internationally up at a little bit quicker pace it's the same dynamic there are two sides and there'll be neutral countries just like in the war there was the allies and the axis powers and then there are neutral countries. And so that part is developing. The U.S. conflict part is probably progressing a little bit quicker. On the world order, the developments in the Ukraine, maybe I should put those in perspective. There is a, a very close relationship, a common objective of the Russians and the Chinese. So there is a competition in the world and there's a dominant world power which is perceived as being overly controlling. And there are five types of wars. There's a trade war, there's a technology war, there's a geopolitical influence war, there is a capital war, and then there's a military shooting war. And we are in the first four of those wars in this competition with China. We are in a shooting war of sorts with Russia and the Ukraine. We're providing arms and so they're shooting. And so there's a military war going on and we're in it in our way. So we're at those particular spots. And the capital war is sanctions. We hear the notion of sanctions. And what that means is they're economic. And the way they work is to shut off, to produce economic pain by either not letting them get at their money 
or not letting them get to goods that they can import. And these have happened through time. In Japan, that was what set us up for the bombing of Pearl Harbor because the United States cut off Japan's oil supply, was in the process of doing that, and also confiscated its bonds, much the same way is happening now. And that put them into a corner that led them to bomb Pearl Harbor and then we went to a military war. So that's where we are now. And that also is risky because it threatens the value of the dollar because right now debt is dollars. Any currency, the way you hold it is you hold it in the form of debt. You don't hold it just in paper. And um, because there's a rising inflation and because there's a lot of printing of money and because there's also a greater fear on a number of countries that they too could be sanctioned, there is a selling of dollar denominated debt. So you're seeing that the bond market is going down. And so there is that dynamic that's going on. The capital wars are the ones that accelerate immediately before the military wars. Usually the coffers are empty, they're printing a lot of money, and then they're trying to use economics as a weapon. So we're in that part of the cycle. Now, in terms of how this will transpire, I think there are three big questions that we're going to get answers to pretty quickly. The first is, does Putin and Russia win or lose? I'll describe win as what he wanted at the outset, which is win for Russia would be to have the Ukraine be some non-threatening position, such as a neutrality, a guaranteed neutrality, and for Russia to have control over Eastern provinces and for Russia not to be economically devastated, instead to be maybe have a, something like a 10 or 12 percent decline in GDP, and for Putin to be in power. If those four things happen, then the cost of his actions will have been worth what was obtained from that. And that would be viewed as a win. It would be then also a loss <clears throat> from the Western countries. The world is looking at the power of American sanctions because American sanctions are the greatest power the United States has because it controls the world's reserve currency. That's the biggest yeah. asset. But in weaponizing the dollar, it is leading those to get around and not want to hold dollars because they get worried that they're going to be confiscated. So we will see if that dollar sanctions power, we'll see how powerful it is. If it isn't very powerful, that's going to be a problem. While Russia is throwing in military, we are throwing in sanctions. And these sanctions don't cause lives. It's not a military war. So we're fighting it with sanctions and they're fighting it with military. If you didn't have that, how would you fight this war? It would be a much more difficult situation. And the third thing that we're seeing is how the world is lining up, which you know there are in wars, typically Axis and allied powers. And you could see by the actions that are taken as to which are lining up. Who voted in favor of what at the United Nations? Who is allowing what rules? Who is trading with the other party? Russia actually put out a list who are friendly and adversarial countries. You'll see at the next G20 meeting who will be in favor of Russia attending that meeting and who will be in favor of it not attending. And that's making clear how the sides are lining up. So you're seeing those sides line up and all sides are in preparation for war. And so psychology should change and is in the process of changing to realize that you have to think in terms of buying power, not the number of dollars you have. And you have to think how much is your buying power. And so the worst thing is to be in cash. Like I say, cash is trash and to be out of the bonds. The next thing is to have a diversified portfolio of assets with a bias toward inflation protected assets. And I would want to diversify between locations, countries, in terms of the investment based on the criteria I've just mentioned. What do you think? <clears throat> I mean, um, it's trying to you said that the, the uh, was it the new world order started, it was created in 1945, yeah. So we're just running it down for us to understand 
how the uh, I mean the money situation and the um, I mean until this point when you're having this crazy inflation that is happening around the world so I'm thinking I mean yes of course they uh, they print money and I think they are doing it deliberately or maybe intentionally so that they can collapse the entire system and whatnot even the ukrainian and the russian war i think it's just it's just planted for just economic crash or something like that that's how i feel because mm -hmm. to be honest if they want to end the war they can end the war right now if, if russia wants <clears throat> they understand because ukraine has no uh whatever abilities to stop russia mm -hmm. and uh, russia it, it's a it's a i mean um russia doesn't want ukraine to is it join nato or something mm. yes so it's a uh, <clears throat> i mean of course they had to make it that way so that they can prolong the entire war for example um this is according to my own opinion because they know that uh of course they're going to be like uh, meetings in there, what, what they said, that, 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 blah, blah, blah. By the time you think about it, the economy is already crashing. You understand? So, and then they're creating these useless sanctions for, I don't know, Russia. Russia don't really care about these sanctions. Russia is its own country, I mean, it's its own, uh, I mean, what do you call this, country that depends on itself at some point. Do you understand? Russia is, um, First of all, you have to understand it is a um, communist country. Most of the things they like, they like themselves. They do things for themselves. You understand? So the the rate for them to survive even longer is even higher compared to a country that is fully dependent on other countries. Like let's say, for example, a, a country like Kenya. Today, if we start a war with whatever, we're gonna die because we fully depend. Even sugar. No one die. We, I mean, we moment? will we will suffer. Come on, man. I mean, will we will be at a point where the inflation is going to rise to a point that we can't even feed ourselves. Do you understand? We can't even provide for. For, for example, in my country, Kenya, yeah, we used to have this. We used to have a nice um, sugar factory. It's called Mimias. Very nice one. It used to produce sugar for us and whatnot. Guess what? I don't know where this thing just stops it goes bankrupt because of poor leadership poor management and all those kind of stuff and guess what is happening now we're importing sugar from other countries how is that even possible do you understand and just why? the other day you were importing is it maize was it maize from Zambia why would we even do that in this in the first? we have the most beautiful fertile soil in the entire world not not <laughs> Not like I'm, I'm. I'm saying it like, uh, in in a, in a in a maybe if it's not correct way, but it should be correct because you have very fertile land. Many we shouldn't do. exactly many countries do, but we shouldn't be in a position to say that we want to import sugar. Sugar, we're importing sugar. Maize that we can just say let's plant maize. We import the sugar from where? From uh, I think Brazil or something. Okay. Brazil, yes. Why should we be at this position? Why are we making ourselves suffer when we have land? Do you understand? So all this thing is geopolitic. Uh, it's it's more like political. Trade wars. Yes, trade yeah, war. Yes, yes. Trade yes. Trade so trade yes, that's that's trade war actually because they, they 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 I don't know, but it's really crazy. At a point where we have land, but we have we have land. The, the soil is there, and we can plant. Uh, sugar why can't we do that yeah, that's trade war because there's someone who's the government is actually benefiting from all these imports zambia as well at some point was making its own shoes yes was making its own is it maybe is it sausages and according to what i read but some of these things are importing them now you said something about printing money well wait 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 can i say this also in in, in zimbabwe like in 19 in the 90s around that man in zimbabwe if if you if if i tell you let's say at that time i'm like hey, i'm going to zimbabwe you will wish to come back with cotton you understand because zimbabwe had the best cotton ever the best 
not, you know that original you could you can just feel the texture mm -hmm. that this is cotton original. yes you the know quality was great yes i mean the quality is just right there on your fingertips it's just amazing but look at what is happening in that one now i mean all these we actually read the inflation rate yesterday two what it was more than 200 percent. Imagine, to imagine, a country like Zimbabwe has an inflation rate of 200 and something percent. No, that and was because of Sudan. Country. That was Sudan. No, no, because Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe was yeah. high. Imagine, and just because of these stupid sanctions that these other superior countries are creating for us. Imagine if Zimbabwe decided to like, no, 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 no. we're going to plant our own things, we're going to consume, on depend on ourselves. Zimbabwe will never unlock. Do you understand? But it's because of uh, trade wars again, uh, political uh, war, but geopolitical war, and all this kind of stuff. Why can't trade with its own African countries like Europe does? Why can't we have our own money like the US does? What does? And if you were paying attention at the beginning of the video, the video actually talks about how the US dollar is backed by gold. Yes. Where did the US get that gold from? Of course, from 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 you know stealing other countries, and other countries you know. Because, you know, uh, the U.S. came independent in seventeen, so they started all this thing way, way too early, and then they started going into these countries and finding uh, opportunities to actually Holes. steal, they grab. Come, they come with uh, lies. Yes, you understand. So they come to us and lie to us, like, hey, you know what? Drink this wine, you're gonna become like Hercules. Happy. Yes, you're going to become happy. You forget all your problems. And then guess what? Stupid Africans drank the wine and they believed that when you drink wine or alcohol, it's going to stop all your problems, which was a lie. And people took it. <laughs> and guess what? As we drink, they take the land. We drink, they take the land. By the time we realize our land is all consumed by these evil uh, people, and which is so unfortunate that even now as we as we uh, we're talking right now most of our lands in africa we don't literally own them you know i think for me i'm thinking that it's, it's just owned by this thing to be honest because if i find oil here why can't i why can't i be allowed to dig that oil that's that's my land it's my country yeah why can't i dig the oil and okay forget it then okay you found the oil in my land Okay, fine, no problem. You can buy the land, plus the, uh, give me my uh, they compensation. Can rent the land. Okay, so you can rent the land, but even the country itself can't dig that oil until they seek permission from these other people. Even yeah. the oil. And that's African you know, countries, yeah. Yes, I was shocked that Nigeria, man, one one of the lead, uh, you know, Nigeria was once one of the leading oil pro, uh, oil. Um, Produces in the world, you know that mm. at some point. I no idea. But now I realize that <laughs> in Nigeria they don't refine their own oil. Imagine you're packaging your oil, and then you're taking it all the way probably to Russia. In Russia they refine it for you. Exactly. They create uh, petroleum oil. They create diesel. They create cooking oil. They create all this. And then now they send it back to you packaged. A price. At a higher price. How stupid is that? <laughs> I also wanted to comment on the US, uh, rat, not US, Ukraine and Russia situation. You said Russia can end it, but what's the US knows doing in this situation? Don't you think if it was just sincerely between the two, it would have ended by now, they would have found a settlement? Of course, because. Uh, these are the leading superpower countries. So, I mean, but the U.S. is on is above. Yes, I mean, U.S. They want to put themselves above. So, of course, when the two heads are going head to head, they have to find a solution very quickly. And now, because Russia is higher than Ukraine, now it, it's it, it's looking like Russia is picking on the on on Ukraine, and then Ukraine now is getting all these allies from other countries, so that to prolong the story and to prolong the narrative. They have to now create all these, you know, meetings, sanctions. I don't know what, what. I don't know all this kind of thing. Oh, yo. But if it was, but also the confusion is coming from within. Some it's, Ukrainian it's from states, provinces, or whatever they call them, want to be ruled by Russia. Do you understand? Yeah. So they should find a way to figure 
that out. And I that think the US is... they want to base in, in Ukraine, that's why. But then why? You know what's funny? Because once they back, have back the base in... there, I feel like they're able to attack yeah, Russia from course, yeah. whenever they feel like There I was guess. a time, I don't know when was that, but um the Russians wanted to to create a base in is it Mexico? I don't know which country. Uh, which country is that? I think one of those Caribbean countries. Guess what? The United States said no, you can't. So why is it that the United States wants to have bases around, yes, the, around world. the world and then uh, forgetting that we told Russia not to? That's what I wanted see, to say. How, how, how superior are you to a point it's that like you think you can just go anywhere and just mount or plant your base in there thinking that yes, this is how we're going to do it. No. I think we're st still stuck in that loop where uh, the states gets to do whatever it wants to do but Russia is not allowed to um, put out its communism out there. Yeah, because, just trying yeah, to because, stop because it by if, all means. if you look at all these countries, most of them are capitalists. Yeah. We understand that. Russia is more like communist, Turkey, you see. So, so they the don't want that. Communism can sell, but yes. communism can commun Yes. They want that. They want the poor to be poor and the rich to be rich. Do you understand? They want you to be. Because, of course, if, if, if you look at it in a, in a critical perspective, poverty is the most, I mean, it's the multi billion dollar industry. So the more they keep you poor, the more they benefit from whatever they're doing. They're becoming rich. So, again, I mean, um, of course, this video is really good. It's actually telling you, uh, giving you. It's just running down what's happened since 1945, yes, how things are going, and the new world, or, new world order, and how we <coughs> adapt to it. So, whatever system comes into place, we're forced to adapt to that. For yes. those that adapt, I guess they get rich, rich, rich. For those that feel poor, poor, poor. And, and it's crazy, and it's crazy that uh, they want to create the new world order. So, I'm thinking. Whoever wins this war, the Russian war, is the one who's going to become... Who sets the tone. Yeah, who sets the tone. Because if you look at the way uh, Putin is doing now, he's trying to make these European countries buy oil, buy, buy oil using rubles. You understand? Using what? Uh, I mean, Russian money. Oh, Rub which is, is a good rupees thing. or rubble? Yes. Uh, so now... Rupees, no. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's rubble here. So now, so now you can imagine that if that happens, Russia is going to be come at the top of the food chain compared to now what is happening. Imagine the it dollar now is even higher than. It's a good than, thing, you know. Why yeah. should the entire world depend on one currency? Because everywhere you go, you can use dollar. Everywhere, almost everywhere you go, you can use. Yeah, because euro. dollar is backed by gold oil and uh, I don't know all these but good that's, resources that's why I don't understand and it becomes annoying that's why I'm saying why can these countries with these minerals back up their own currency with that it can't because I believe that during the Berlin conference they they, they had a treaty and that treaty actually explains no one has actually I, I don't know but I feel like this that true copy that <laughs> it's hidden somewhere if you read it you're gonna be oh my god so my country sold understand but mm -hmm. anyway uh, so, so so now you see what is happening in the uh <clears throat> what do you call this uh, russia has stopped the supply of oil in, in uh, no, not really stopped but yes kind of regulates it i don't know but i was reading to europe european countries now i'm thinking the european countries are gonna like go down like crazy because now if you look at the euro the euro is actually kind of collapsing not collapsing but the dollar is actually at a higher side mm -hmm. compared to euros and and i'm thinking that it's going to reach a point now now people when they're seeing the dollars going high, people want to buy dollar they want to stick to that side i think so of course i mean if i see if i, I have euros yeah if i have euros and i'm seeing you think i wouldn't want Do you think to it's going to be better than the pound uh, we can't we can't tell but it's most likely yes because you think so i i than don't the know pound? I don't know if it's going to be greater than the pound, but what's going to happen is either they're going to crush all of them all together or something is going to happen to, but whatever's happening to the UK now, there's a lot of instability there, trust me. So the pound mostly... So because of the Ukraine thing? Yes. And also, uh, you know, now they want to introduce crazy things that they, I don't know. But again, the Queen wouldn't, wouldn't allow the pound to, because the Queen is the ruler of... I don't think it's going to allow the pound to but again it depends with the economy 
anyway. But unless they, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm saying that unless they lie to the people that the pound is on the higher side, you know, this thing is an illusion anyway. Yeah, yeah like so. that's just the piece of paper, you know, yeah, that it's, controls it's a fiat us. currency. So. That makes us have <laughs> sleepless nights. Yeah. I mean, if you watched uh, Money Heist towards the end, you'll understand that all this thing is just an illusion. I mean, trust me. The government can say that oh, our money is backed up by. What if the, the dollar is not even backed up by anything? What if it's not even backed up mm -hmm. by anything? We're, they're just telling us, yes, it's stronger than what if. Do you understand? Of course, there's that whatever thing. We see people buying things using dollars, yes, but what if it's just they're just telling us that so that to, to have a half a hand? What if maybe Kenyan shilling is even higher than whatever? <laughs> But we are here because we have enough resources. We have enough. Um, I don't know. It's crazy. Anyway, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, if you guys have thoughts on, on on this video and our thoughts, please comment down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, we'll see you in our next reaction video. If there's something you want us to react to, drop the link down below. The name of whatever you want us to react to, and we'll be more than glad to do it. Yes, and we would like you guys to send similar yeah. videos really interesting actually i love talking about such kind of things i i tend to have little knowledge i don't know much i have little knowledge we can share and on the comment section below let's talk about what is actually happening around the world and how can we be in a position to uh prepare ourselves for what's coming or what's actually you know <clears throat> yes coming about to us to yes down. about to go down it's very important yes let us know in the comment section below and this is